No sentient being had ever entered a black hole and returned alive until a daring team of humans tried. The busy spaceport cantina buzzed with dozens of alien races drinking, gambling, negotiating. In a dim corner, a grey-skinned Bolian named Orion hunched over a phosphorescent blue liquor. His pointed ears twitched as a large reptilian hand clapped his shoulder. Orion, thought you were studying that black hole in Vega, Zoltar said, green scales glinting. The hulking Saurian dropped heavily into the seat across from Orion. Project's dead, Orion grunted, swirling his drink. Probes destroyed by extreme gravity radiation. High command won't risk ships or lives. Zoltar flicked a forked tongue. Of course not. Black holes kill everything. Maybe not everything. Orion glanced around, then leaned in. We detected garbled transmissions from inside the hole. Impossible. Thought so too, enhanced the signal, heard one word, human. Zoltar gaped, shocked. Humans in a black hole insanity. Orion shrugged. They're crazy enough to try it. Dozens of races had studied the Vega black hole for generations. None dared approach it. But humans, humans would fly right into that cosmic monster, either to unlock its secrets or die trying. The fate of humanity and the future of science itself now rested on their tiny, fleshy shoulders. Zoltar's eyes narrowed as he leaned in. Wait a minute. You're saying the Bolians are just going to bury their heads in the sand on this one, even with the possibility of life inside a black hole? Orion rubbed his temples, his drink forgotten. They won't budge. High Command's response was swift and unequivocal. No Bolian is to go anywhere near that black hole. Period. But that's insane. Zoltar slammed a fist on the table, drawing a few curious glances from nearby patrons. This could change everything we know about the universe. How can they not see that? You know the Bolians, Orion sighed. Always err on the side of caution. The higher-ups think the potential dangers outweigh any possible benefits, but... He trailed off, his eyes darting around the room before he leaned in closer, voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Not all of us agree with that assessment. Zoltar's eyes widened as he put two and two together. Orion, you're not thinking of... Orion held up a hand, cutting him off. I didn't say anything, but hypothetically, if someone had been working on a specialized ship, one built to withstand the incredible forces inside a black hole, and if that someone was planning a secret mission to investigate these human signals... Orion, that's... that's... Zoltar struggled to find the words, his mouth hanging open in shock. Crazy. Orion finished for him, a wry smile tugging at his lips. Maybe. But I have to know, Zoltar. Black holes have always been these impenetrable, destructive monsters. But if humans found a way to survive inside one, maybe even thrive. Just imagine what that could mean for science, for our understanding of the cosmos. Zoltar sat back his mind reeling. After a long moment, he fixed Orion with a serious stare. This ship of yours, you're sure it can handle it? Orion nodded, his expression resolute. Been working on her for years. Reinforced hull, state-of-the-art gravity dampeners, radiation shielding. She's made for this. He downed the last of his drink and stood, his chair scraping against the cantina floor. I'm leaving tonight if I don't make it back. He clapped a hand on Zoltar's shoulder. Well, it's been an honor, my friend. With that, Orion turned and strode out of the cantina, his steps purposeful. Zoltar watched him go, a mix of awe and apprehension swirling in his gut. In the shadowy recesses of a secluded hangar bay, Orion's hands flew over his sleek black ship, checking every system, every connection. The vessel was his masterpiece, crafted for the sole purpose of the impossible, entering a black hole and emerging unscathed. Orion was so engrossed in his work that he nearly leapt out of his skin when a voice cut through the silence. I had a feeling I'd find you here. Spinning around, Orion found Zoltar stepping out of the shadows, his green scales glinting in the dim light. Zoltar, what are you doing here? Zoltar raised his hands in a placating gesture, Relax, I'm not here to stop you. In fact, he dug into his pocket and produced a small, glowing data chip. 
I want to help. Orion eyed the chip suspiciously. What is that? A grin spread across Zoltar's face. Something that might just give you a fighting chance. I did some digging in the Bolian archives. Turns out, we're not the first to pick up these strange human signals. What do you mean? Orion's eyebrows shot up in surprise. Zoltar strode over to a nearby terminal and inserted the chip. The screen flickered to life, displaying a complex array of equations and diagrams. Decades ago, a Bolian scientist named Dr. Zandon proposed a theory. He believed that if a ship could generate a precise frequency of gravitational waves, it could essentially ride the currents of a black hole, using its immense gravity as a form of propulsion rather than being crushed by it. Orion leaned in, studying the equations intently. His eyes widened as the implications sank in. Incredible, but why wasn't this pursued further? A sigh escaped Zoltar's lips. Dr. Zandon was ridiculed by the scientific community. They deemed his ideas too radical, too dangerous. He was ostracized, his funding cut. He died a broken man, his theories never tested. Orion nodded slowly, his mind racing. And you think his work could be the key to successfully navigating the black hole? Zoltar shrugged. It's a long shot, but it's better than flying in blind. I've loaded all of Dr. Zandon's research onto this chip. If anyone can make sense of it and put it to use, it's you. Taking the chip, Orion felt a surge of determination. Thank you, my friend, I won't let this go to waste. With a final nod, Zoltar melted back into the shadows, leaving Orion alone with his ship and the precious data that could mean the difference between success and oblivion. Turning back to his vessel, Orion gripped the chip tightly, steeling himself for the monumental task ahead. He was about to embark on the most daring scientific expedition in Bolian history, armed with nothing but his wits, his ship, and the groundbreaking theories of a long-dead visionary. As the sleek black ship raced through the stars, its engines roaring, propelling it ever closer to the looming moor of the black hole, the Bolian scientific community buzzed with the shocking news of Orion's daring expedition. Dr. Zephyr and Dr. Quasar stood toe-to-toe -to -toe in the bustling research facility, their voices rising above the hum of advanced equipment and the chatter of their colleagues. Dr. Quasar's eyes were alight with a mix of excitement and disbelief as he spoke. Orion's lost his mind. He's going to get himself killed chasing after some far-fetched theory. Dr. Zephyr shook his head, his brow furrowed. Dr. Quasar held up a finger. But what if he's right? What if Zandon was onto something all those years ago? Orion's no fool. He wouldn't risk everything on a whim. Zandon was a laughingstock, Dr. Zephyr scoffed. His so-called breakthrough was nothing more than the ravings of a madman, and now Orion's following in his footsteps straight into oblivion. Dr. Quasar leaned forward, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. But the human signals, Zephyr, what if they've found a way to navigate the black hole's interior? What if they've discovered something we've never even dreamed of? A bark of laughter escaped Dr. Zephyr's lips. The humans, please. They're more likely to have stumbled into the black hole by accident, bumbling their way to their own demise. Dr. Quasar's eyes narrowed. Don't underestimate them. They may be primitive by our standards, but their creativity and resourcefulness are unparalleled. If anyone can find a way to unlock the secrets of a black hole, it's the humans. Silence fell between the two scientists as Dr. Zephyr considered this. The weight of the implications hung heavy in the air. Finally, he spoke, his voice low and measured. If Orion does manage to enter the black hole and return with proof of human activity, it would be the greatest scientific discovery in Bolian history. It would change everything we thought we knew about the universe. Dr. Quasar nodded, a flicker of hope dancing in his eyes. And if he doesn't make it back, at least he will have dared to do what no Bolian has ever done before. He will have sacrificed everything in the name of scientific advancement. The two scientists stood in silence, the gravity of the situation sinking in. The fate of Orion and perhaps the future of Bolian science itself now hung in the balance, teetering on the edge of a black hole and the daring theories of a long-dead visionary.
In the cold void of space, Orion's ship hurtled onward, the inky blackness of the singularity growing ever larger in his viewscreen. His hands flew over the controls, making minute adjustments to the gravitational wave generators as Dr. Zandon's equations scrolled across the display. The ship began to shudder as it neared the event horizon, the immense gravitational forces threatening to tear it apart. Orion gritted his teeth, his eyes locked on the readouts. The black hole filled the viewscreen, a swirling maelstrom of darkness that seemed to devour the very fabric of space. Orion's fingers danced across the ship's controls, his eyes darting between readouts as he made minute adjustments. The comm crackled again, Professor Nebula's voice straining with worry. Orion, please, it's not too late to turn back. Orion shook his head, jaw set. I can't do that, Professor, I've come too far. His hand hovered over the switch that would engage Dr. Zandon's gravitational wave emitters. One way or another, I'm going to see this through. Hides are risking everything on an untested theory. Sometimes that's what science demands. Orion's voice was calm, resolute. If we never take risks, we'll never make progress. The professor's sigh was heavy with resignation. You truly have embraced the human spirit, haven't you? A wry smile tugged at Orion's lips. Let's hope it serves me well in there. His finger descended on the switch, engaging gravitational wave emitters now. The ship shuddered as the emitters roared to life, invisible forces rippling out to clash against the immense gravity of the black hole. For a moment, everything seemed to hang in the balance, the vessel groaning under the titanic stresses. Then, miraculously, the shuddering eased. The ship steadied as if finding purchase on some unseen cosmic track. Orion let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. It's working, he whispered, almost afraid to believe it. Dr. Zandon's theory is, it's actually working. The black hole yawned before him, no longer a harbinger of certain doom, but a gateway to the unknown. With a surge of exhilaration, Orion urged his ship forward, riding the waves of warped space-time into the very heart of the singularity. I'm going in, Professor, he said, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and wonder. If, if I don't make it back... I know. Professor Nebula said softly. Your name will be remembered, Orion, as the Bolian who dared to do what no one else would. Orion nodded, his throat tight. Then with a deep breath he cut the comm link. There could be no more looking back now, only the mystery ahead and the faint tantalizing promise of the human signal guiding him on. As the ship plunged into the abyss, the external cameras flickering and failing in the intense gravitational distortions, Orion's hands flew over the controls with a desperate intensity. The hull groaned and creaked around him, the vessel shuddering as if it might tear itself apart at any moment. But Orion's eyes remained locked on his instruments, his mind racing as he fought to maintain the delicate balance of the gravitational wave emitters. He could feel the ship straining, could hear the alarms blaring their warnings. But he... pushed himself to his limits, but even as the ship tore through the warped fabric of space, riding the waves of Dr. Zandon's theories, Orion couldn't suppress a thrill of excitement. He was doing what no Bolian had ever done before, venturing into the unknown, chasing the tantalizing promise of human contact. As Orion's ship crossed the event horizon, the scene shifted to the gleaming high-tech Bolian High Command Center. The doors to the control room burst open and Admiral Rigel stormed in his face a thundercloud of anger. "'What's this I hear about Orion going into the black hole?' he demanded, his voice booming across the room. "'Why wasn't I informed?' Commander Vega, who had been intently monitoring the situation, leapt to attention. "'Sir, it all happened very quickly,' he explained, his words tumbling out in a rush. By the time we realized his intentions, he had already stolen the ship and was en route.' Admiral Rigel slammed his fist down on the console, making the screens flicker, and nobody thought to stop him, to shoot him down before he could compromise our security. Commander Vega hesitated, choosing his next words carefully. Sir, with all due respect, Orion is one of our best scientists. If anyone can navigate a black hole and return with valuable data, it's him. The Admiral scowled, his eyes narrowing. Data? 
You think I care about Data when our entire operation could be at risk? If he finds those humans... That's just it, sir, Commander Vega interjected, a hint of excitement creeping into his voice. If the humans have indeed found a way to survive inside a black hole, imagine what we could learn from them. Their technology, their strategies... Admiral Rigel paused, considering this. He paced across the room, his boots clicking on the polished floor. And you believe Orion is capable of making contact with them, of securing this information? Commander Vega nodded firmly. I do, sir. Orion's ship is equipped with state-of-the-art communication arrays. If the humans are in there, he'll find a way to reach them. The Admiral was silent for a long moment, weighing his options. The tension in the room was palpable. The only sound, the hum of the computers and the distant thrum of the ventilation system. Very well, he said finally, his voice low and measured. We'll allow Orion to proceed, but I want constant monitoring of his progress. And if there's even a hint of trouble, we pull him out immediately. Understood? Yes, sir, Commander Vega responded crisply, snapping a salute. And, sir, he added, a glimmer of excitement in his eyes, if Orion does succeed... If he brings back knowledge that could advance our species by centuries? Admiral Rigel fixed him with a steely gaze. Then, Commander, we make sure that knowledge stays in Bolian hands. No matter the cost, we cannot allow the humans to have an advantage over us. Commander Vega nodded, a slow smile spreading across his face. Of course, sir. Bolian dominance must be maintained at all costs. As the Admiral strode out of the room his coat billowing behind him. Commander Vega turned back to his monitors, his heart racing. He was about to witness history in the making, events that could reshape the very fabric of Bullion society. And at the centre of it all was one brave, determined scientist hurtling through the heart of a black hole on a mission that could change everything. Commander Vega's eyes were glued to the screens, watching the telemetry from Orion's ship as it plunged deeper into the abyss. The readouts were like nothing he had ever seen, the gravitational forces warping and twisting in ways that defied comprehension. But Orion's ship held steady, the gravitational wave emitters pulsing with a steady rhythm, carving a path through the impossible. Suddenly an alarm blared across the control room. Commander Vega leapt to his feet, his heart in his throat. One of the monitors was flashing red, a warning signal screaming for attention. Report, he barked, his voice tight with tension. One of the technicians, a young Bolian with wide, frightened eyes, stammered out a response. Sir, we're detecting a massive energy surge from within the black hole. It's... it's like nothing we've ever seen. Commander Vega stared at the screen, his mind racing. Could this be it? Could this be the sign that Orion had made contact? Commander Vega stared at the flashing alarm on his screen, heart pounding. Could it be? Had Orion actually made contact with the humans inside the black hole? Horian gaped at his sensor readings in disbelief. There, amidst the swirling maelstrom of gravity and radiation, was an enormous pulsing energy signature. It defied all known physics, all rational explanation. What in the cosmos? Orion muttered, fingers flying over his controls, trying to get a clearer reading. He nudged his ship closer the hull groaning as it fought against the immense gravitational forces. Suddenly his comm system crackled to life, making Orion jump in his seat. Unidentified Bolian vessel, this is Captain Frank Miller of the human intergalactic ship Odyssey. We've been expecting you. Orion's mouth fell open. Expecting him, how was that possible? Captain Miller, this is Orion of the Bolian Science Academy. I... I don't understand. How did you know I was coming? The human captain's chuckle filled the comlink. We've been monitoring your transmissions for some time now. Had a feeling someone would come looking for us eventually. I must say, we're impressed. You're the first non-human to ever dare entering a black hole. Orion's mind reeled. The implications of what the human was saying. It was almost too much to process. But, but how have you survived in here? The gravitational forces alone should tear any ship apart not to mention the radiation. Ah, that's the thing about human ingenuity, Captain Miller said, a note of pride in his voice. When we first discovered the potential for black hole navigation, we knew the risks. 
but we also saw the opportunity, so we developed specialized shielding, artificial gravity generators, radiation scrubbers. Took years of trial and error, but we made it work. Orion shook his head in amazement, barely able to comprehend what he was hearing. His eyes drifted back to the pulsing energy reading on his senses. That signal I'm picking up. What is that? I've never seen anything like it. That, my Bolian friend, is our power core, the captain explained. We've managed to harness the energy of the black hole itself to fuel our systems. It's virtually unlimited power. Zorishan felt like the breath had been knocked out of him. Unlimited power harvested from a black hole? It was... It was groundbreaking, revolutionary, the scientific knowledge the humans must have gained. Captain, this... this changes everything. The things you must have learned, the advancements you must have made. Indeed, Captain Miller agreed, his voice turning serious. And we're willing to share that knowledge, all of it, on one condition. Orion leaned forward in his seat, hanging on the human's every word. Name it. There was a pause, heavy with anticipation. Then, join us, Orion, help us explore the wonders of the cosmos, free from the limitations of normal space travel. With your Bolian technology and our human ingenuity, together we could achieve wonders beyond imagining. Orion sat back, stunned. Join the humans. Explore the universe with them, powered by black hole energy. It was... it was the opportunity of a lifetime. The chance to push the boundaries of science further than any Bolian had ever dreamed. But to abandon his people, his mission, Orion's heart was torn. He had a duty to the Bolian Science Academy, to his superiors in high command. They were expecting him to return with knowledge, with technology they could use to advance Bolian interests. But this, this was bigger than Bolian interests, bigger than any one species. This was about the future of the galaxy itself. Captain Miller's voice crackled over the comm, breaking into Orion's racing thoughts. I know it's a big decision, Orion. Take your time. Think it over. But I truly believe that together, humans and Bolians could change the face of the universe, could create a better future for us all. Orion swallowed hard, his heart pounding. The weight of the choice before him settled on his shoulders like a physical thing. The fate of his people, the fate of the galaxy... It all hung in the balance. He looked out at the swirling chaos of the black hole, at the pulsing light of the human ship's impossible power core. And he knew, deep in his bones, that the decision he made in the next few moments would change the course of history itself. Before Orion could even begin to formulate a response to Captain Miller's astonishing offer, the comm system crackled to life again, a new voice cutting through the static. Orion, this is Commander Vega. The Bolian commander's tone was sharp, urgent. We've been monitoring your communications. Do not trust the humans. Orion blinked, taken aback by the sudden interruption. Commander, what do you mean? Think about it, Orion. Commander Vega pressed, his voice tight with tension. Why would the humans be so willing to share their technology with us? They've always been secretive, always kept to themselves. There must be an ulterior motive. Captain Miller's voice cut back in, calm but firm. Commander Vega, I assure you, our intentions are purely peaceful. We seek only to expand the boundaries of scientific knowledge, to work together for the betterment of both our species. Lies, Commander Vega snarled, his voice dripping with suspicion. You seek to lure us into a trap to steal our own technological secrets. Orion's head spun as he listened to the two voices, each making a compelling argument. On one hand, the humans had achieved the impossible, had unlocked secrets of the universe that the Bolians had only dreamed of. The prospect of learning from them, of pushing the boundaries of science together, was tantalizing. But on the other hand, Commander Vega's words gave him pause. The humans had always been an enigmatic species, their motives and true capabilities shrouded in mystery. Could this offer of partnership be nothing more than a ruse, a ploy to gain access to Bolian technology? Captain Miller's sigh crackled over the comm. Orion, I understand your hesitation, but consider this. 
In all the centuries of Bolian space exploration, have your people ever achieved anything close to what we have? Have they ever dared to dream as big, to take the risks necessary for true advancement? Orion was silent, the captain's words echoing in his mind. It was true. For all their scientific prowess, the Bolians had always been a cautious species, hesitant to push the boundaries too far. And where had that gotten them? Centuries of incremental progress, while the humans had leapt ahead, harnessing the very power of black holes. Commander Vega's voice crackled through again, more insistent this time. Orion, as your commanding officer, I order you to return to Bolian space immediately. We cannot risk contamination from these humans. But Orion's mind was already made up. He squared his shoulders, his voice steady as he replied, I'm sorry, Commander, but I cannot pass up this opportunity, the potential for knowledge, for progress. It's too great. He turned his attention back to Captain Miller, resolve hardening in his gut. Captain, I accept your offer. I will join you in your exploration of the cosmos, but I have one condition of my own. Name it. Captain Miller replied, a hint of satisfaction in his voice. I want assurances that this knowledge will be shared freely with the Bolian people, that this will be a true partnership, not a human domination. There was a smile in Captain Miller's voice as he responded, Orion, you have my word. Together humans and Bolians will usher in a new era of scientific enlightenment as equals and partners. As Orion's ship docked with the massive human vessel, a sense of destiny swelled within him. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with both promise and peril. But one thing was crystal clear. The universe would never be the same. As Orion's ship docked with the massive human vessel, his mind reeled with the implications of this unprecedented partnership. The airlock hissed open, revealing a gleaming corridor bustling with human activity. Uniformed crew members strode purposefully past, nodding politely to Orion as he stepped aboard. A tall, broad-shouldered human with a neatly trimmed beard approached, his hand outstretched. Orion, I presume, Captain Frank Miller. Welcome aboard the Odyssey. Orion shook the captain's hand firmly. Thank you, Captain. It's an honor to be here. Your ship is incredible. Captain Miller grinned. Just wait until you see the rest of her. Come on, let me give you the grand tour. As they walked the corridors, Orion marveled at the advanced technology integrated seamlessly into every surface. Holographic displays flickered with complex equations, crew members tapped at sleek control panels, and through the occasional viewport, the swirling maelstrom of the black hole loomed, a constant reminder of the incredible forces they were harnessing. Days turned into weeks as Orion settled into life aboard the Odyssey, he worked closely with the human scientists, sharing Bolian knowledge and learning in turn about the incredible advancements humans had made in fields like gravitational wave manipulation and energy harvesting. But it was in the ship's mess hall, over a meal with the friendly ship's engineer Jack, that Orion learned of the true scale of human ambition. I still can't believe the sheer scale of this operation, Orion marveled, gesturing with his fork. The energy you're harnessing from the black hole, it's beyond anything I could have imagined. Jack grinned, taking a swig of his drink. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? But honestly, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Orion leaned forward, his curiosity piqued. What do you mean? Jack glanced around, then lowered his voice conspiratorially. Well, you didn't hear this from me, but the power core... That's just the beginning. Our top scientists have been working on something even bigger, something that could revolutionize space travel as we know it. Orion's eyebrows shot up. Revolutionize space travel? How? Jack took another sip, savoring the moment. Wormholes, he said simply. Orion blinked, surprised. Wormholes? But that's just theoretical. No one has ever managed to create a stable wormhole, let alone navigate one. No one until now, Jack said with a wink. Our team has found a way to use the black hole's energy to punch through the fabric of space-time itself, create a shortcut, if you will. Sorahan shook his head in disbelief. That's... that's incredible. The distances we could cover, the worlds we could explore. 
Jack nodded, his eyes sparkling with excitement. Exactly, and with Bolian technology added to the mix, who knows what we could achieve. Orion sat back, his mind reeling with the possibilities. But why hasn't Captain Miller mentioned this? Surely a discovery of this magnitude. Jack shrugged. You know how it is with these top-secret projects. Need to know basis and all that, but between you and me, I think the captain's just waiting for the right moment, waiting to see how this whole human Bolian partnership pans out. Orion nodded slowly, a sense of unease creeping over him. The technological leaps humans had made were staggering, almost too good to be true. And if they were keeping secrets even from him... He pushed the thought aside. No, he had come too far to turn back now. Whatever the humans were planning, he was committed to seeing it through. For the sake of science, for the sake of his people, no matter where this strange new partnership may lead... Orion stared out at the swirling chaos of the black hole, his mind reeling from Captain Miller's revelation. The observation deck's viewport framed the cosmic maelstrom, an abyss of infinite darkness punctuated by flashes of light, stars and galaxies being consumed by the insatiable gravitational maw. Captain Miller's presence beside him was a palpable weight, his words hanging heavy in the air. Orion turned to face him, his expression a mix of disbelief and horror. You can't be serious. Destroying my homeworld, wiping out billions of lives. For what? A chance at survival in some unknown corner of the universe. The captain met his gaze unflinchingly. It's not a chance, Orion, it's a certainty. With the wormhole drive, we can escape the inevitable collapse of this black hole. We can find a new home, a new beginning for both our species. Orion shook his head, his hands clenching into fists at his sides. And what gives you the right to make that decision? To play God with the fate of entire civilizations? Captain Miller sighed, his shoulders slumping slightly. It's not a decision I make lightly. But as the leader of this expedition, as the one responsible for the survival of my crew and the future of humanity, it's a burden I must bear. He placed a hand on Orion's shoulder, his grip firm. I'm asking you to share that burden to be the bridge between our people, to lead the Bolians into a new era of prosperity and unity with humanity. Orion wrenched himself away from the captain's grasp, his eyes blazing. Unity. You speak of unity while planning to annihilate my world, my people. This isn't partnership. It's coercion. It's genocide. Captain Miller's expression hardened. Call it what you will, but the fact remains. The wormhole drive is our only hope and we will use it, with or without your cooperation. Orion's mind raced, desperate for a solution, a way out of this impossible dilemma, but everywhere he turned he saw only the cold, unyielding logic of the captain's plan. The black hole loomed before them, a dark god demanding sacrifice. And in that moment, Orion understood the true nature of the choice before him. It was not a choice between his world and the humans. It was a choice between annihilation and survival, between clinging to the past and embracing an uncertain future. He looked out at the swirling void, his heart heavy with the weight of billions of lives, and then slowly he turned back to face Captain Miller. I will not condone the destruction of my homeworld, he said, his voice low and steady but neither will I condemn my people to die in the name of principle. He took a deep breath, meeting the captain's gaze with a steely resolve. If we do this, if we merge our civilizations, it must be as equals. No more secrets, no more hidden agendas. We face the future together, or not at all. Captain Miller was silent for a long moment, considering Orion's words. Then slowly he nodded. Agreed. A true partnership, forged in the crucible of this moment. A new beginning for both our species. He extended his hand once more, and this time Orion took it. The die was cast, the path forward set. And as the two leaders stood there, silhouetted against the churning heart of the black hole, they knew that the fate of not just their own worlds, but of the entire galaxy, now rested on their shoulders. Orion's head spun as he strode through the gleaming corridors of the human ship, his footsteps echoing in the eerie silence. 
The weight of his decision pressed down on him, the knowledge that he had just consigned his entire world to oblivion in the name of a desperate gamble. He found himself outside the door to Jack's quarters, his hand hovering over the entry panel. He needed to talk to someone to share the burden of this terrible knowledge, and Jack, with his easygoing manner and quick wit, seemed like the only friendly face in a sea of uncertainty. The door slid open, and Orion stepped inside. Jack looked up from where he was hunched over a glowing holographic display, his eyebrows raising in surprise. Orion! I wasn't expecting... He cut off abruptly as he took in Orion's expression, the haunted look in his eyes. What's wrong? What's happened? Bjorchin sank into a chair, his head in his hands. The wormhole drive, he said, his voice muffled. It's not just for exploration, it's a weapon. Jack frowned, leaning forward. A weapon? What do you mean? Orion looked up, his eyes meeting Jack's. When they activate it, it will destroy the black hole and my home world along with it. Jack's eyes widened, shock and horror playing across his features. What? But... but why? Survival, Orion said bitterly. The captain says it's the only way to ensure the future of our species, that we have to leave this place before the black hole collapses and takes us with it. Jack sat back, his face pale. My God, and you agreed to this? Orion's shoulders slumped. What choice did I have? If I refuse, they'll do it anyway. At least this way up, maybe I can save some of my people, lead them to a new life among the stars. Jack was silent for a long moment, his eyes distant. Then, slowly, he reached out and placed a hand on Orion's arm. I'm sorry, he said softly. I can't imagine the weight of this decision, the sacrifice you're making. Orion shook his head. It's not just my sacrifice, it's the sacrifice of billions. And for what? A chance at survival in some unknown corner of the universe. Jack's grip tightened. It's more than a chance, it's hope. Hope for a future beyond this moment, beyond the darkness that threatens to consume us all. He leaned in, his eyes intense. You're not alone in this, Orion, I'm with you. And together we'll find a way through this. We'll build a new world, a better world, for both our peoples. Orion met his gaze, a flicker of gratitude sparking amidst the despair. Thank you, my friend, I only hope the price of that world is not more than we can bear. The two sat in silence, the weight of the future pressing down on them, and beyond the walls of the ship, the black hole churned on, a relentless force of destruction and creation, the crucible in which the fate of worlds would be forged. The ship's intercom crackled to life, Captain Miller's voice echoing through the corridors. Attention all crew, prepare for wormhole drive activation in T-1 hour. I repeat, wormhole drive activation in one hour. Orion's heart clenched, the finality of the moment sinking in. In one hour his world would cease to exist, consumed by the very power that had brought him to this place. He rose to his feet, his expression hardening into a mask of resolve. I need to be on the bridge, I need to see this through. Jack nodded, standing as well. I'll come with you, you shouldn't face this alone. Together they strode through the ship, the hum of the engines rising to a fever pitch, as the vessel prepared for its fateful jump. On the bridge, Captain Miller stood before the main viewport, his gaze fixed on the swirling maelstrom of the black hole. He turned as Orion and Jack entered, his expression grim. It's time, he said simply. The drive is primed and ready. Once we enter the wormhole, there's no turning back. Orion stepped forward, his eyes meeting the captain's. I'm ready, but I want your word one last time, my people. We'll have a place in the new world we build, Captain Miller finished, his voice firm. I give you my solemn oath as the leader of this expedition and as a fellow traveller on this path. Orion nodded, a flicker of hope sparking amidst the despair. Then let it be done for the future of both our peoples. Captain Miller turned to the helm, his voice ringing out across the bridge. Engage wormhole drive on my mark. Three, two, one. The ship shuddered the black hole seeming to swell before them, the fabric of space-time warping and twisting. For a moment, everything hung suspended, balanced on the knife's edge between one reality and the next. 
and then with a blinding flash of light, the Odyssey surged forward, plunging into the heart of the maelstrom. Darion gripped the railing, his knuckles white as the ship bucked and heaved, the forces of gravity and anti-gravity warring for dominance. Through the viewport, he caught a glimpse of his homeworld, a serene blue marble against the backdrop of the void. And then in an instant it was gone, swallowed by the ravenous maw of the wormhole. A choked sob escaped Orion's throat, the magnitude of his loss crashing over him like a tidal wave. Beside him, Jack gripped his shoulder, a silent anchor in the storm of grief. The ship shuddered again, the wormhole drive straining against the immense forces that sought to tear it apart. Alarms blared, the bridge awash in a cacophony of sound and light. Hold steady, Captain Miller shouted over the din. We're almost through. Orion closed his eyes, the faces of his people flashing through his mind. His family, his friends, all those he had left behind. All those who would never know the sacrifice he had made in their name. And then, with a final shuddering jolt, the Odyssey burst free of the wormhole, the infinite expanse of normal space stretching out before them once more. Orion opened his eyes, his heart hammering in his chest. They had made it. They were alive. But at what cost? He turned to the viewport, half expecting to see the familiar stars of his home system, but instead he found himself staring out at an unfamiliar vista, a vast expanse of glittering stars and swirling nebulae unlike anything he had ever seen. Where are we? he breathed, his voice hoarse. Captain Miller stepped up beside him, his expression a mix of awe and triumph. We're home, Orion, the new home of humanity and of the Bolian people. He gestured out at the alien starscape, his eyes gleaming. Welcome to the Andromeda Galaxy, the place where we will build our future together. Zorichun stared out at the vast, unknowable expanse, a sense of destiny settling over him like a mantle. The journey had only just begun, and though the path ahead was fraught with uncertainty and peril, one thing was clear. In this moment, standing on the precipice of a new era, the fate of two civilizations and of the galaxy itself rested in their hands. Thorian turned to face Captain Miller. What now? If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.